everybody. Wow, it's been a really long time since I've done a live. Woohoo! Um, I actually, I wanted to come and update um, everybody. I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about if I'm in Maui yet and not. Um, I There was a brief period in there if I was going to go or not. Um, I But my my bosses and the company I'm going to be working for is very excited to have me and they were not affected by Lahaina, the stuff that happened in Lahaina. And um, yeah, I, I just wanted to share a few things uh, and then um, I will let you go. But I wanted to say, you know, um, I've been, you know, lots of different people that I have been talking to um, and, and people that are in the world right now are going through a lot of stuff, right? Um, there is so much going on globally um, and in our communities and politically and in personal lives um, that it, it is very, it is hard. It is, it is harder than it probably ever has been, um, partly because we can, we know what's going on all over the world now Whereas, you know, a hundred years ago we didn't. And so, um, anyway, that all being said, um, this whole process, I am so like my bags under my eyes cause I have not slept for a while. <laughs> I, I find myself crying at the drop of a hat because this move is so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be, a, I knew it was going to be a challenge. I knew it was going to be tough. But I also know that that um, the Lord said something yesterday as I was waking up, as I because I was falling asleep, waking up. It was very early in the morning, and I heard it, the audible voice whisper to me, "I prepared you for this. I prepared you for this." And I, it, it kind of woke me up, and you know, we. I was listening to a speaker today and they were talking about, you know, we're always going to be tested in this life. God is always testing us. You know, it isn't so much that God tests us. We live in a fallen world and God expects us to put on the armor and fight. He's already given us the victory, but we still have to walk through it. The enemy is alive and well in this world. And if you don't believe that, then you are going to be SOL because we can't God wants us to be strong fighters and all we have to do is walk. I mean, we walk with the armor of God. We walk with it and the sword of the spirit. What is that? That's the word of God. And we, we speak it out of our mouths. And as I was, um, I've been reading scripture. I've just been saying it out loud because my emotions are not matching up to the scriptures. <laughs> they are not matching up to my faith. And the thoughts that are attacking my mind, we have to, you can't um, just make bad thoughts go away. You have to replace them. You can't just make bad go away. You have to replace them with good or it's just going to be, it's just going to by default go back to bad stuff because that's all we're hearing. We're being inundated with negative stuff. and. You know, I had to say goodbye to someone personal and I that's hurting um, terribly and I'm going to be missing my family. I there's and I'm concerned about finances. I'm concerned about everything. You know, this is we um, but I also know I have a deep knowing because I because I know Christ, because he lives in me and because I commune with him every day. I talk with him every day and I cry with him and I tell him my 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 um, frustrations and I tell him I'm sorry and I it's like when you read the Psalms and David I love I love that God used so many st stupid people in the Bible <laughs> because that means he can use us every single person that he he touched that he loved to hang with they were all imperfect people we are nothing without him. We are imperfect, broken people without him. With him, we are empowered to do anything, but only because he's in us and only because he's with us. 
We still have to deal with our flesh suits. We still have to do deal with the enemy who's alive and well and wants to kill you, wants to destroy you, wants to steal from you. So if you don't want your kids stolen, if you don't want um, people in your family hurt, if you if you want anything good, you're gonna have to fight for it. And I want to encourage you that you can. All you need to do is just start walking. Open your mouth and speak something good. You don't have to feel it. I mean, the really cool thing about the Word of God is the Word of God is, it works with or without your feelings. I mean, you don't have to have the feelings. You say it enough, you, you say it enough to yourself, you hear it enough to yourself, you play speakers enough to yourself. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing. The, that scripture that says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, it's really interpreted as faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And we know this to be true because it's true with negative stuff. When we hear, you know, all of those abuse stories of, of all people who have been abused as children growing up. You're stupid. You will never amount to anything. Or those of us who've been in abusive relationships for any number of years, it takes, you know, that stuff is 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 said to you over and over and over. And that's what you believe. So the more, the, um, and I always say this in my videos, that whatever you hear the most of, that is what you are going to believe. So anyway, I just want to encourage you. I, I It bothers me all the time that, that I hear stuff in my spirit that doesn't really line up with scripture. That, I mean, Jesus said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so all you have to do is start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, their accounts of Jesus, and how Jesus treated people, how he treated broken people, how he loved on the unlovely. Um, you know, the Bible talks about how um, God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and I love that. That means, you know, he used the unqualified people. I am not qualified in man's eyes. I mean, I get rejected in so many different ways. I have been rejected by hundreds of jobs, tons of guys, tons of girl relationship, friendships, by I have been rejected by people in the church that have been over me and have judged me. I have been rejected by thousands of people. And if I didn't have the Lord to say, I approve you, I can still use you, I will bless you. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. And if he made you and if he created you, he loves you. It doesn't matter what man says. He will supply your needs. He promises to do that. He will be with you. He said he will never leave you. He said he would make your way straight. He said that angels would guard you and protect you. He said that if you're if you're um, if you are saved, then your whole house, you can sanctify your whole household. I mean, we have to know the scriptures and start fighting for our families, start fighting for our communities, start fighting for the, the unborn. We have to start fighting for the girls that are being, that, for the kids who are being trafficked, fighting for women who are being abused, fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. I mean, come on people. <laughs> it isn't easy, but it's never going to be easy down here. And if we think that the enemy is going to roll out a red carpet because we have a word from the Lord or because now we're Christians and why me, God, why me, God, why now, why does this keep happening to me? Well, you know what? It's going to keep happening, but God has already given us the victory and it will happen less the more we take our authority and use it. We use our authority to fight off the enemy and he cannot he cannot win. The Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and what does it say? He must flee. That means he can't stay. So if you want to get rid of anxiety and fear in your life, stop saying, I am so anxious. I always have anxiety. It's just part of my life. I've, I always get so ang anxious over things. I get, you know, stop using that. Stop keeping it. Stop owning it. Own who you are in Christ. Own that your identity is in him. Own that he has that greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. There is nothing too impossible for me because God has me. God lives in me. And did you know that the power of God raised Jesus Christ from the dead? There's scripture that says that 
the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. There's nothing you can't do. So we need to be encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. In fact, the Bible says that um, David, oh, and I, I totally forgot. I went off on a tangent and I forgot. But King David, you know, his whole life he spent worshiping God and he was a mess. <laughs> he was a mess. He screwed up all the time. He, he constantly, and in his, if you look at the different chapters of Psalms, because he wrote most of the Psalms, and if you look how he said, I mean, he's like, woe is me, I, you know, I am undone. And he, and he talks about how horrible his life is and how the enemies are always after him. But then at the end of almost every chapter, he turns the page, he says, but because of the Lord, if, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be in the land of the living. That, you know, he, he's a prime example of us of most of us who have these emotions that go up and down. And I mean, I have been fighting um, probably, well, this is one of the biggest battles of my life right now. This is huge for me. And I, I, ha I didn't realize it, but I also know that the timing of God putting me over there, when they are so desperate for love, they are so desperate for I mean, I, that's part of why I feel uh, even a bigger, heavy uh, burden for going over there um, and the humbleness that God would choose me to represent him in any way, shape or form. It feels like a heavy mandate to put me over there all by myself. <laughs> and I will, you know, but God also, I have been, I've been hearing the promise that you know, in scripture, again, scripture, we have scripture. When we put it in us, it comes, the Holy Spirit brings it up when we need it. And the Bible said that Jesus said that nobody who gives up husbands, wives, or children, or things in this life, um, anybody who gives those things up will be, um, will get it back in this life. And it, you know, no matter what you're facing today, um, and as we continue in this world down here, just know that, that God has prepared you for this. And like God said to me, and you know, he continues, I ask for confirmation multiple times during the day right now. I need to hear his voice. I need to hear his word. I need to see his hand in my life. And he talks to us in very intimate ways where we can go, okay, I, you see me. I, okay, you've got me. Okay, I can breathe in. I can breathe out. And that is exactly what I've been having to do. Um, and I just want to encourage you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're facing, it's it's all doable. It's, it's dealable. You can deal with it. And you can fight it and you can resist it. We need to fight for our families. We need to fight for our kids. And stop inviting more of the enemy to have its way in our lives and accept defeat. Stop accepting defeat. When Jesus paid such a dear price to give us victory, we owe him that. We owe him, if he can do what he did. You know, he was in the garden and sweating blood because he said, God, if I don't have to do this, please don't let me do this. And I'll be honest, there have been some times when I have not wanted to do what he's asked me to do. And I'll, there's a part of me that doesn't want to do this. It feels big, but I don't want to miss out. And I want to be, I want him to be able to trust me. I want him to, I want his, I want every blessing and I want my family to be blessed. What if I don't do it and my family misses out on the blessings that I could have gotten for them? What if my grandson misses out on a legacy I could have left for him? What if people over there die without knowing Christ because I didn't do what, what I said, what I could have done? You know, there's, there's going to be times in this world where it's, you feel alone. You feel like it's like you're drowning and you, you, the grief might be more than you can handle the, the battles are very tough, but our emotions don't have to line up with the word. Our emotions, God, God never said to 
Um, you know, with God, all things are possible only if you're happy about it. With God, all things are possible only if you're not crying about it. We can say these things with tears. We can say these things um, with an anxious stomach, <laughs> feeling like you want to throw up and waking up in the middle of the night. But, you know, I am excited. I am excited for what God's doing in the earth. And I'm so grateful that we aren't in this battle alone, that he has given us everything we need. He has prepared you for this. If you are seeing this video and whatever you're going through, he has prepared you for this. And if you don't know that for sure, ask him to show you. Ask him to um, show you in his word. Ask, start talking to him like you would a friend. I mean, he wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to lead you. He wants to show you his secrets. He wants to show you his blessings. He wants to show you things you've never seen before. In fact, I'll end with this. In Ephesians 3, 19 and through 21, it talks about how he is able to do far over and above all that we dare to hope, ask, think, dream, or imagine. And those can be pretty, pretty big, right? You know, bless you guys.